The series begins by showing a man named Hiwu who has just been appointed as a prosecutor. In doing his job as a prosecutor, Hiwu has an unusual and even quite extreme way, where he does not hesitate to get into a fight with a group of thugs who work for the Mafia. With great fighting skills and a brave nature, Hiwu always fought to eradicate injustice and eradicate corruption in his country. Hiwu is also known as a kind-hearted prosecutor who cares deeply for the weak who are usually marginalized and ignored by the government and society. Currently, Hiwu is investigating a politician named Taesob who is suspected of committing a series of corrupt acts. After interrogating several witnesses, Hiwu finally gets information and also important evidence that confirms that Taesob has committed corruption. Even the man is also willing to give his testimony in court as long as Hiwu can ensure that he will put Taesob in prison. After obtaining this evidence, Hiwu immediately issued an arrest warrant to arrest Taesob and interrogate him at the prosecutor's office, even though it was opposed by his superior, Chief Prosecutor Sok Hoon. Sok Hoon warns Hiwu that Hiwu won't be able to put Taesob in jail because Taesob has a reputation as a generous and kind-hearted counselor, thus gaining the full support of the public. However, Hiwu insists that he will prove Taesob's crimes and show the public that their judgment about Taesob has been wrong. On the other hand, Taesob seems to be quite impressed with Hiwu who has the guts to investigate him and even issue a warrant to arrest him. So Taesob voluntarily comes to the prosecutor's office and seems calm when Hiwu blatantly confronts him. Hiwu initially feels favored because he has important evidence and a witness who will give his testimony in court to bring Taesob down. But unexpectedly, Taesob turns out to have foreseen this and orders a hitman to kill the witness so that he can't give testimony that could land Taesob in jail. Since Hiwu has no other witnesses who can testify at the trial, the prosecution ends up releasing Taeso, while Hiwu rushes to the crime scene to investigate the witness's death, hoping to find evidence and other clues that lead to Taeso. Upon arrival, Hiwu is confronted by two female thugs and gets into a fierce fight with them. Despite being overwhelmed by the female thugs, Hiwu eventually defeats them and climbs to the roof of the building to meet the man who killed his important witness. The man, dubbed Dr. K, was a hitman hired by Taeso to kill the witness and silence Hiwu. They then got into a fierce fight and Dr. K was able to easily knock Hee Woo down several times, as he had better fighting skills than Hee Woo. Despite being badly injured as Dr. K beat him to a pulp, Hee Woo refused to give up, so Dr. K decided to kill him. Before executing Hee Woo, Dr. K called Jin Woo, Taesob's aide, and told him that he would finish his job as instructed. Dr. K then injects something into Hee Woo's neck and saying that from tomorrow, the world will remember Hee Woo as a corrupt prosecutor and drug addict who chose to end his own life. After that, Dr. K throws Hee Woo's body off the rooftop and miraculously, Hee Woo returns to the rooftop and realizes that time has suddenly stopped around him. Hee Woo, who thought that he was dead, met a woman named ji who claimed that she wasn't human. ji then shows a series of flashbacks of Hee Woo's life who used to be a victim of bullying when he was in school. In the flashbacks, it was also shown that Hee Woo's parents died in a hit and run and since the death of his parents, Hee Woo decided to become stronger by practicing martial arts so that he could defend himself. After graduating from high school, Hee Woo decides to study law and take the bar exam so that he can become a prosecutor who will fight to eliminate injustice. However, before he can achieve that, Hee Woo is killed by Taesob who thinks that justice only favors those who can have it by any means, including money and power. Ji Hyun then asks Hee Woo if he would be able to put Taesob in jail if Hee Woo was given one chance to live again. Upon hearing that, Hee Woo told Ji Hyun that he had risked his life to expose Taesob's crimes and drag him to the prosecutor's office, so he wouldn't think twice about doing it again if he was given the chance to live once more. After getting Hee Woo's assurance, Ji Hyun then tells Hee Woo that she will save Hee Woo's life this time, and in return, Hee Woo must successfully uncover all of Taesob's crimes and put him in jail. Ji Hyun advises Hee Woo to act carefully and plan everything perfectly to frame Taesob, because if Hee Woo fails again, then he'll really die in vain. Ji Yoon seems to hold a grudge against Taesob as she insists that Hee Woo promise her to make Taesob really suffer in this world, as it will take a long time to wait for the afterlife. Hee Woo actually wants to ask about Ji Yoon's past, but he chooses not to think too much about it, and then vows to Ji Yoon that this time he'll be able to uncover all of Taesob's crimes and make Taesob really suffer. After delivering one last message to Hee Woo, Ji Yoon suddenly disappears and Hee Woo suddenly returns to the past when he was still working part-time at a convenience store after graduating from high school. Hee Woo, who was still confused because he suddenly went back in that time, was then surprised by the appearance of a girl named Han Mi who wanted to pay for her groceries. However, instead of serving Han Mi, Hee Woo ran out of the department store and rushed to his house to prove that he had really come back to life. Arriving in front of his house, Hee Woo remembered the past when his parents were still alive, where at that time, Hee Woo often ignored the attention and affection given by his parents. Hee Woo assumed that his parents were unable to take good care of him because they were always busy earning a living. However, Hee Woo eventually regretted everything after he lost his parents forever. In the present, Hee Woo then entered the house and seemed relieved and happy to find his parents alive and in good health. 
Hi Woo hugged them while crying happily, while his parents seemed confused by Hi Woo's attitude who suddenly cried and hugged them. Hi Woo even did sweet things that had never been done by him before, such as opening the door for his parents when they were about to leave the house, and advising them to be careful on the road. After getting a second chance to live again, Hi Woo decided to live better than before and respect others more, so that he would not become a selfish and arrogant person like before. Hi Woo is also determined to be much stronger than before so that he can protect himself, his family and also all those who are oppressed by injustice. To prepare for law school, Hi Woo decides to take several courses at once and accidentally meets Han Mi who is also taking a course at the same place. While Hi Woo seems to be very excited as he listens to all the lessons taught in class, Han Mi doesn't seem too enthusiastic and she often sleeps in class while the instructors are explaining the subject matter. One night, when Hee Woo was about to pick up his parents who had just come home from work, he saw a car driving at high speed and swerved sharply at a turn until it hit his parents who happened to be standing at that place. Fortunately, the incident turned out to be a dream and Hee Woo finally realized that his parents' hit and run accident would happen tomorrow, so he decided to prevent the accident from happening at all costs. Since it was not possible for his parents to take time off from work, Hi Woo decided to pick them up in front of the factory where they worked and take them home safely. In his previous life, Hi Woo had investigated his parents' hit and run accident after he became a prosecutor, but Hi Woo did not find any clues to uncover the identity of the hit and run perpetrator who killed his parents. Near the time of the hit and run accident, Hi Woo managed to save his parents from a white car that swerved sharply at the corner where they were about to cross. But unexpectedly, a few minutes after the incident, a black car appeared to lose control and traveled at high speed towards them. Hi Woo tried to save his parents by pushing them to the opposite side, but the collision was unavoidable and happened within seconds, so Hi Woo thought that his parents had been hit by the car and died like before. But fortunately, Hi Woo and his parents managed to survive the incident and only suffered minor injuries from the impact. When Hee Woo was about to find out about the driver of the car, he found Jin Woo who had just arrived at the scene of the accident and looked shocked when the police told him that the driver was killed. The cause of the accident was the driver was driving drunk, then lost control and finally hit a power pole. When the police managed to remove the driver's body from the mangled car, Hi Woo discovers that the driver was none other than Tae Sob's son, Hyun Sog, who in his previous life was a council member trying to recruit Hi Woo as one of his father's supporters. After the incident, Hi Woo realized that fate had changed because he managed to save his parents, while Tae Sob lost his son which would make Tae Sob even more ruthless than before. Sometime later, Hi Woo finally manages to get the top rank in the trial exam, and the news is brought to the attention of Gyu Ri, a girl who is the best student in the institute. Gyu Ri was visibly upset that Hi Woo managed to beat her in the trial exam by gaining far more points than her who was ranked second. Hi Woo who had known Gyu Ri in his previous life, then advised Gyu Ri to take care of her health by eating and resting regularly and not to push herself too hard to study. But Gyu Ri completely ignored Hi Woo's advice and just left. Three months later, Hi Woo, who had learned about Gyu Ri's past of collapsing in an alley near a pharmacy, rushed to the location to save Gyu Ri before it was too late. Hi Woo then takes Gyu Ri to the hospital and advises her to stop taking pills that can keep her awake overnight, as taking these pills in the long run can cause complications that can harm her health. Hi Woo also advises Gyu Ri that she shouldn't push herself too hard to study in order to get good grades. However, Gyu Ri says that she should study hard to get into a good university to prove to her parents that she's a smart girl and something to be proud of. Surprisingly, Hi Woo finds out about Gyu Ri being adopted by her parents and tells Gyu Ri that he understands Gyu Ri's desire to work hard to get good grades, as an expression of gratitude to her parents for adopting her. Even so, Hi Woo tells Gyu Ri that she will never achieve anything, including thanking her parents and making them proud if Gyu Ri ends up becoming sickly from overexerting herself. Upon learning that, Gyu Ri finally realizes her mistake and decides to follow Hi Woo's advice. On the other hand, Hi Woo was still not completely relieved even though he had managed to change Gyu Ri's destiny, as he did not yet know what Gyu Ri's fate would be in the future. A few days later, Hi Woo accidentally overhears a conversation between Jong Il and his friends who intend to harm Han Mi, because Jong Il is annoyed at Han Mi for ignoring him lately. Later that night, Hi Woo secretly follows Jong Il and his friends to a nightclub and discovers they have poisoned Han Mi and knocked her out. Jong Il and his friends intend to harass Han Mi, but Hi Woo arrives in time to save her and beat them up. But unexpectedly, Jong Il's father turns out to be a police chief, so he reports Hi Woo and Han Mi alleging that they abused him for no apparent reason. Ironically, Jong Il's father chose to protect his son by manipulating the testimonies of witnesses, as well as the results of the crime scene investigation and blamed Hi Woo for the incident. Surprisingly, So Kun suddenly appeared and immediately slapped Jong Il, while showing a video recording made by Jong Il when he tried to harass Han Mi sent by someone to his mobile phone. With this evidence, Jong Il could not avoid the crime he had committed and the police finally acquitted Hee Woo of all charges. Han Mi then invited Hee Woo to dinner as an expression of gratitude because Hee Woo had saved her. 
However, He Wu politely declined the invitation on the grounds that he would get sick if he smelled cigarettes because Han Mi was a smoker. The next day, Gyu Ri, who had recovered and was discharged from the hospital, met He Wu at the department store and gave He Wu her notebook as an expression of gratitude because He Wu had saved her. As time goes by, He Wu and Gyu Ri become close friends, especially since they often study together before the CSAT exam. On the other hand, Han Mi, who has romantic feelings for He Wu since he saved her some time ago, then becomes jealous of He Wu's closeness with Gyu Ri. While waiting for his CSAT exam results held a few days ago, He Wu, who decided to pay his own tuition fees without having to burden his parents, then got a part time job offer at a prominent law firm. The head of the law firm, Min Sog, plans to handle the case of an environmentalist organization suing a construction company for planning to build a mall in a mountainous area that could harm the ecosystem in the area. However, the lawyers at the law firm seem to disagree with Min Sog's plan to handle the case because the company hired a lawyer from Chunha Group who has a good reputation and has received support from the community. Even so, Min Sog insists on handling the case and believes that they will be able to win the lawsuit and defeat Chunha Group. He Wu, who was aware of the case, then tried to help Min Sog by gathering information about some rare endangered animals and plants that could only be found in the mountainous region, so Min Sog and his team managed to win the case. For He Wu's hard work in helping him win the case, Min So then rewarded He Wu with cash. A few days later, He Wu finally got the news that he had been accepted into Hongkuk University's law department and he intended to use the prize money to pay his tuition fees. On his first day of class, He Wu impressed his lecturers as well as his colleagues with his knowledge in civil law, although He Wu actually got his knowledge of law from his previous life as a prosecutor. After class, a student named Soon Wan approached He Wu to tell him about a meet and greet for new students and asked He Wu to attend the event. At the same time, a new student named Min Su approached them and asked He Wu to get acquainted. Upon realizing that He Wu was reluctant to attend the meet and greet, Min Su invited him to go for coffee. On the way to Min Su's favorite coffee shop, they are surprised by an old woman who runs out from inside her house and is about to hit a young girl. Fortunately, Min Su and He Wu managed to help the girl and stop the old lady who turned out to have dementia because she suddenly referred to Min Su as her husband. Shortly after, the old lady's husband appeared and apologized to them for his wife's behavior and explained about his wife's health condition to them. He then apologizes to the girl who turns out to be a delivery volunteer for the disadvantaged class, who always brings food to the couple. However, He Wu and Min Su haven't had a chance to get acquainted with the girl because she suddenly leaves immediately after seeing her watch. Later that evening, He Wu decides to attend a meet and greet held at a hall in Hongkuk University and meets Kong Jin who used to be a corrupt counselor who would do anything to get his way. Surprisingly, Min Su also attended the event and he turned out to be Kong Jin's schoolmate in high school and it was obvious that they both hated each other. On the other hand, He Wu has no recollection of ever meeting Min Su in his previous life and assumes that Min Su appeared after his past changed. In the event, He Wu also met Il Hyun who used to be his superior at the prosecutor's office who once warned him not to bother Tae So, even threatening to imprison him if He Wu insisted on conducting an investigation to uncover corruption committed by Tae So. He Wu, who was fed up with Kong Jin and Il Hyun, decided to leave the event, as did Min Su who then invited He Wu to have a drink. Unlike He Wu who is always serious, Min Su is the one who jokes around and always blatantly says everything that comes to his mind. Although Min Su often annoyed him by doing things as he pleased, He Wu did not deny that he and Min Su often had the same judgment about people like Kong Jin and Il Hyun. In the middle of their conversation, a waitress suddenly snapped and scolded one of the male customers for secretly photographing her legs with his mobile phone. He Wu and Min Su who heard the commotion then looked back and found that the waitress was none other than the volunteer girl who was working part-time at the tavern. The girl immediately got into an argument with the male customer who denied the accusation that he had photographed her secretly. Upon seeing that, Min Su wanted to help her, but He Wu warned him that they would get into trouble if they hit the man. Therefore, He Wu called the police and reported about the commotion. When the argument escalates and the man is about to slap the girl, He Wu rushes to stop him and warns him about the police who will soon arrive to deal with the problem between them. Upon knowing that the police were on their way, he tried to run away but Min Su deliberately tripped him into falling down. Shortly afterward, the police finally arrived at the place and took him away, while the volunteer girl thanked He Wu and Min Su for helping him twice. The girl then introduced herself as Hia who turned out to be a computer engineering student at Hongkuk University. While they were drinking, Hia noticed that He Wu was always stealing glances at her and asked him about it. He Wu said that Hia seemed familiar to him, but He Wu couldn't remember if he had met Hia in his previous life. On the way home, He Wu was surprised by Dr. K's appearance and they engaged in another fierce battle that soon overwhelmed He Wu. In the end, Dr. K defeated He Wu and threw him off the bridge. He Wu thought that he would die when he was hit by a truck, but it all turned out to be a nightmare that seemed to remind him not to forget his mission, even though everything seemed to be going well in his new life. 
The next day, Yi Wu decided to train his physique to become stronger by visiting Song Jie, his MMA instructor who had trained him in his previous life. After a boxing match against Hee Wu, Song Jae finally agreed to train Hee Wu, although he was surprised that Hee Wu acted as if they had met before. On campus, Soon Wan tells Hee Wu that Gyu Ri hasn't been to class since the first day, even though she managed to get a scholarship to study law at Hongguk University. Upon learning that, Hee Wu takes the initiative to call Gyu Ri and gets information about Gyu Ri's father's business that suddenly went bankrupt. Hee Wu then meets Gyu Ri at the hospital who tells him about her father whose health condition has worsened after his business went bankrupt. Juri added that she might not be able to continue her studies because she had to work to pay for his father's medical expenses and make ends meet, especially after their house was auctioned off to pay debts. Hee Wu, who was curious about this, went to the court to attend a property auction held by the prosecutor's office. During the auction, Hee Wu secretly observed an old man named Young Su who deliberately bought several properties that were priced far below the market price. While visiting the location of some of the properties purchased by Yong Su in the auction, Hee Woo realizes that Yong Su bought some basement apartments in a fairly shabby district in Seoul, which would not be able to make a big profit for Yong Su even if he renovated the apartment and rented it out at a much higher price. Hee Woo, who has been observing Yong Su in the next few auctions, then ventures over to Yong Su and introduces himself as a law student who has been assigned to observe the auction. Hee Woo then asks Yong Su's purpose for buying the property, but Yong Su is reluctant to tell Hee Woo his reason. However, after seeing Hee Woo's persistence, Young Su finally told him the reason for buying the property and also some advice if Hee Woo wanted to invest in property. With Young Su's advice and a little help from Min Sog, Hee Woo finally managed to buy Gyu Ri's house that was auctioned off in court. Although Hee Woo tried to keep it a secret that he had helped Gyu Ri get her house back, Gyu Ri found out about it from Min Sog who couldn't avoid when Gyu Ri questioned him with a series of detailed questions. On campus, Gyu Ri approaches Hee Woo and thanks him for helping her. On the other hand, Hee Woo also helps Han Mi study so that Han Mi can get good grades and get into Hongguk University. Hee Woo praises Han Mi by saying that Han Mi is actually a smart student if Han Mi has the intention to study hard, instead of playing around with punks like Jong Il. Later that night, as Han Mi walks home to her house, a man is waiting for Han Mi and takes her to So Kun's house, who is none other than Han Mi's biological father. So Kun, who knows that Han Mi intends to study at Hongguk University, gives Han Mi some money to pay for her tuition fees. However, since Han Mi is So Kun's illegitimate child, So Kun's son, Yong Il, seems unhappy with Han Mi's presence in their house and thinks that Han Mi is always blackmailing his father, so they get into an argument. So Kun, who heard their argument, came out and defended his son by telling Han Mi to apologize to his son, then kicked her out. Han Mi, upset with her father's treatment, drinks and calls Hee Woo to come meet her at a tavern. Han Mi then reveals to Hee Woo that she's So Kun's illegitimate daughter, and everyone thinks that she's always blackmailing So Kun, when in fact, it's So Kun who always gives her money. A few days later, Hee Woo gets an offer from Kang Jin and Il Hyun to join a secret club that is said to ease Hee Woo's way into a career in law. Hee Woo then accepts the offer as part of his plan to defeat Tae Sob. During their conversation, Hee Woo learns that Tae Sob and his henchmen are conducting a redevelopment project in the Gyeonggi region, where most of the properties in the region belong to Yong Su. Upon hearing that, Hee Woo immediately met Young Soo and revealed about the project to Young Soo, then advised Young Soo to sell his properties in the region as soon as possible before Tae Sob and his henchmen used devious means to take control of all the properties and bankrupt Young Soo. In his previous life, Young Soo went bankrupt when the bank demanded him to repay the loan until Young Soo was eventually found drowned in the Han River. Therefore, Hee Woo was determined to protect Young Soo this time while thwarting Tae Sob's plan to profit illegally. After selling all his properties in the Gyeonggi region, Young Su then gave the money to Hee Woo and asked him to manage the money so that Hee Woo could realize his dream of controlling Chuna Group. Young Su then thanked Hee Woo because Hee Woo had saved him from bankruptcy. Young Su thinks that Hee Woo has a good personality even though Hee Woo is quite ambitious to achieve his goals. Therefore, Young Su gave Hee Woo advice and also some suggestions for Hee Woo to achieve success and also big profits if Hee Woo wanted to invest in property. The next day, Hi Wu and Gyu Ri go to a seminar on their campus where Tae Sob is the speaker. Gyu Ri seems excited because she apparently admires Tae Sob, who is an alumnus of Hongguk University, while Hi Wu comes to the event because he is curious about the nonsense that Tae Sob will say. But unexpectedly, Hi Wu sees Ji who came with Tae Sob, and Hi Wu finally learns that Ji is Tae Sob's personal assistant. Hi Wu, who realized that he had never seen Ji in his previous life, assumed that Ji might have passed away first and Tae Sob was involved with her death. On the other hand, Min Su and Hia who dislike Tae Sob, chose to drink at a tavern while discussing Tae Sob. Hia thinks that Tae Sob is a hypocrite and all the kindness he shows to the public is just nonsense to gain support because Tae Sob plans to run for president. Shortly afterward, Hi Woo shows up and immediately takes Min Su home by taxi while asking Hia to wait for him, because Hi Woo plans to take Hia back to her house. 
However, Hia turns out to go home first and she doesn't realize that a man is following her secretly. Hiwu, who tries to catch up with Hia, realizes that the man is following her and thinks he's a stalker. Hiwu interrogates him, but the man insists that he's not a stalker, so they get into a heated fight until Hia notices the fight and stops them. Hia tells Hiwu that the man is Jin Hyog, the bodyguard ordered by her father to watch her secretly. Upon learning that, Hiwu finally remembers about Hia who turns out to be the only daughter of Gon Yong, the head of Chuna group. The following days, Jin Hyog secretly spies on Hiwu and informs Hiwu's background to Gon Yong, who seems impressed with Hiwu's achievements and fighting skills as he is able to outperform Jin Hyog. On the other hand, Hia seems to have romantic feelings for Hiwu and intends to rethink her plan to study abroad as she wants to be close to Hiwu. Meanwhile, Min Su introduces Hiwu to his friend, Song Huan, who wants to develop the communication platform called Haha -ha Talk. Hiwu immediately remembers Song Huan in his previous life, where Song Huan was forced to go abroad after he lost an intellectual property case against jail telecommunications. Song Huan told Hiwu that Chuna Telecommunications CEO, Chan Il, had called him to talk about the Haha -ha Talk project. Upon hearing that, Hiwu immediately knew that Chan Il intended to steal Haha -ha Talk's patent, as Chan Il was Tae Sob's spy in Chuna Group. Therefore, he Wu set out to trap Chan Il and foil Tae Sob's plan to make millions of dollars from Aha Talk. First, he Wu deliberately handed Hia the Haha -ha Talk proposal and revealed about Chan Il calling Song Huan personally, instead of on behalf of Chuna Telecommunications. Hia then told that to her father, who seemed shocked that Chan Il called Song Huan personally, which was very suspicious. Don Yong, who suspected that Chan Il might be planning to steal Haha -ha Talk's patent, went to Tae Sob and told him to get rid of Chan Il while warning that Chan Il would betray them sooner or later. Gon Yong adds that he will consider acquiring Mire Motors if Tae Sob gets rid of Chan Il. On the other hand, He Wu and Min Su asked Song Huan to secretly record his conversation with Chan Il just in case, while warning him about Chan Il possibly stealing Ha Ha Tok's patent. After obtaining evidence that Chan Il was trying to steal Ha Ha Tok's patent from Song Huan, He Wu then handed the evidence to Il Hyon who was a rookie prosecutor, and advised him to start an investigation into Tae Sob's involvement in the patent theft attempt, since Tae Sob was the chairman of the telecommunications and a committee in parliament. Il Hyon seems excited because he thought that he will be handling a big case involving a famous public figure like Tae Sob. But unexpectedly, one of Tae Sob's henchmen, So Kun, had warned Tae Sob about the investigation, so Tae Sob ordered Dr. K to get rid of Chan Il. A few days later, Song Huan told Hee Woo that Gon Yong called him and said that Chuna Telecommunications would invest in Aha Talk. In addition, Song Huan also told him about the mysterious text message sent to him before he met Chan Il. In the message, someone claiming to be named Pluto tried to warn Song Huan to be careful around Chan Il. Shortly afterward, the television news reported that Chan Il died after jumping off the roof of the building. Everyone thought that Chan Il ended his life, but Hee Woo found out that Tae Sob had ordered Dr. K to kill Chan Il. The next day, Min Su told Hee Woo that he managed to find the owner of the mobile phone that sent Song Huan mysterious text messages. The phone belonged to a convenience store employee who had lent his mobile phone to a woman who was none other than Ji Hyun. Sometime later, Hee Woo's parents decide to resign from their jobs as factory laborers and open a well-selling restaurant, so Hee Woo occasionally helps them to serve customers. In addition, Hee Woo also helps Il Hyun to solve a murder case of a man named In Pyo who was killed by his wife, Song Yong. After investigating, the police arrested a man who was an acquaintance of NPO because Song Yong forged evidence and worked with her mistress to frame the man. However, He Wu, who had known about the murder in his previous life, gave Il Hyun a clue and promised the suspect's son, Song Man, that he would prove Song Man's father's innocence. A few days later, He Wu managed to keep his promise to Song Man and Song Man thanked He Wu for helping his father. On the other hand, Han Mi successfully passed the CSAT exam and was accepted into the journalism department at Hong Kong University, as she intends to become a reporter despite So Kun warning her against majoring in media or government. Just when He Wu thought that his new life was going according to plan, he suddenly receives a notification letter requiring him to join the military for two years. Yu Ri and Min Su seem a little anxious that He Wu has to join the military immediately, which means that they will graduate before He Wu. Later that night, He Wu decides to return the money Yong Su gave him, because he can't trust anyone with that much money, so it's safer to return it to its owner. While He Wu was in the army, He Ya finally decided to study abroad. Seven years later, He Wu finally passed the bar exam and became a prosecutor who volunteered to be assigned to the Gimson branch office instead of the central prosecutor's office in Seoul. However, the reason He Wu came to the branch office was to persuade Chief Prosecutor So Q to return to Seoul. He Wu openly revealed his purpose to So Kyu who questioned He Wu's reason for wanting to send him back to Seoul, even though the central prosecutor's office in Seoul had demoted him and sent him to handle some trivial cases at a branch office located in a remote area. So Kyu assumed that He Wu must be targeting someone important in the government, but He Wu was reluctant to go into details and asked So Kyu to wait while he devised a plan. 
He Wu begins his work as a prosecutor by investigating several criminal cases involving the Yuche gang that seem suspicious, as if someone is manipulating the investigation of the cases. Therefore, He Wu intends to reinvestigate and asks for help from Song Man who came to him a few years ago, and promised to always help He Wu to repay He Wu for saving his father. He Wu and Song Man then enter a secret gambling house run by the Yuche gang and try to get information from a woman named Hua Jin who works at the gambling house. Later that night, He Wu calls So Q and tells him that he plans to destroy the Yuche gang that runs the illegal house and commits a series of crimes, but always escapes the law. So Q looks shocked to hear that and tries to warn He Wu to abort his intention, because the Yuche gang is working with corrupt police and government officials, making it impossible for them to destroy the criminal gang. However, He Wu ignores So Q's warning as he intends to prove to So Q that he is a tough prosecutor who will always fight for justice and convince So Q to side with him. With the help of Song Man and an investigating officer from the Gimson prosecutor's office named Min Gok, He Wu manages to defeat the thugs and obtain evidence confirming that the Yuche gang is running the gambling house illegally. However, just as they are about to secure the evidence, Min Gok is suddenly attacked by a young man named Yoon Sok. Surprisingly, He Wu turns out to have known Yoon Sok in his previous life, and intends to convince Yoon Sok to side with him since Yoon Sok has pretty good fighting skills. He Wu then offered Yoon Sok to work for him, and Yoon Sok told him that he would do everything He Wu said if He Wu defeated him. They then got into a fierce fight and Yoon Sok was able to knock He Wu down a few times, though in the end, He Wu managed to defeat Yoon Sok and knock him unconscious. Soon after that, Sok Q arrived at the scene and found the thugs that He Wu had defeated. However, instead of praising He Wu's performance, So Q gave He Wu a hard slap for daring to defy his orders. The scene then switches to He Wu's previous life and shows So Q coming to He Wu at the sole prosecutor's office to hand over all the clues he has collected about a series of criminal cases that occurred in Gimson that may have a connection with Tae Sob. At that time, So Q decided to resign from his job as a prosecutor and asked He Wu to uncover the mastermind behind all these criminal cases. In the present, So Q warns He Wu to always be careful because his life is more important than anything else. After raiding an illegal gambling house run by the Yuche Gang, He Wu manages to find evidence that the Yuche Gang bribed government officials as well as the police and manipulated their financial records. Not only that, Hua Jin also informs He Wu that the Yuche Gang kidnaps young women and commits human trafficking by selling the young women to brothels. On the other hand, Song Man, who is assigned to spy on the Yuche Gang's activities at the harbor, manages to get information about a drug deal that the Yuche Gang will be doing at the docks. Although He Wu manages to get some important clues, the leader of the Yuki Gang, Gu Jun, chooses to remain silent, so He Wu has to think of another way to get a confession from Gu Jun for all the crimes committed by the Yuche Gang. He Wu then assigns Song Man to hand over the documents to Han Mi who is now working as a reporter. On the other hand, He Wu and So Q are severely reprimanded by the mayor and several council members for taking bribes from the Yunki gang, but He Wu is undeterred and plans to uncover the truth behind the criminal case and destroy the Yuche gang. He Wu then meets So Kun at the sole prosecutor's office and asks him to handle the Yuche gang's criminal case as part of his plan. He Wu knows that So Kun needs a big case to increase his popularity, because So Kun is eyeing the position of general attorney. Therefore, He Wu offered to help So Kun realize his dream of becoming the general attorney, as long as So Kun was willing to bring back He Wu and So Q to the sole prosecutor's office and join his team. Although So Kun immediately agreed to the offer, he secretly told Tae Sob about He Wu and So Q. After seven years passed, He Wu finally reunited with Hia who had completed her study and returned to South Korea. He Wu also met Han Mi who came to Gimson to cover the investigation conducted by the prosecutor's office regarding the Yuche gang criminal case. After visiting So Kun in his office, He Wu also meets Min Su and Gyu Ri who have become prosecutors. In the evening, with the help of Song Man and Min Gok, He Wu finally manages to catch the Yuche gang members who are about to make a drug deal at Gimson Harbor, while Il Hyun and others raid the Yuche gang headquarters and put them in prison. After successfully obtaining evidence of the criminal acts committed by the Yuche gang and arresting Gu Jun and corrupt officials affiliated with the Yuche gang, He Wu then goes to Yoon Sog to give him a job. Yoon Sog initially seemed hesitant when He Wu offered him a job, but he finally accepted the job after He Wu paid all the medical expenses for his mother who was hospitalized. Sometime later, He Wu was finally reassigned to the sole prosecutor's office with So Q and also a prosecutor named Song Ho. Although So Kun seemed to welcome their arrival at the sole prosecutor's office, So Kun secretly installed bugging devices in So Q's office and secretly assigned He Wu to spy on So Q. However, since He Wu is on So Q's side, he tells So Q about the bugging device and asks So Q and Song Ho to pretend not to know about the bugging device and act casual. Later that evening, He Wu attends a secret club meeting that includes the most powerful people in the country as well as some senior prosecutors like So Kun and Il Hyun. They all bow to the club leader who is none other than Tae Sob. 
Hee Woo, who is the youngest club member to join, gets the chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with Tae Sob who openly expresses his desire to be the single most powerful person in the country. In the meantime, Il Hyun is handling the murder case of a female student and the suspect of the murder case is a young man named Ju Sog who is none other than the lover of the victim. However, Ju Sog insisted that he did not kill his girlfriend. Even so, Il Hyun intends to throw Ju Sog into prison and publicize the murder case on a large scale to cover up the corruption case committed by the CEO of Miri Electronics, Mr. Joan, who has the support of Sok Hoon and Tae Sob. On the other hand, Hee Woo secretly investigates the murder case to catch the real killer because he believes that Ju Sog did not kill his girlfriend. One week later, Ju Sog is finally found innocent of the murder case as Gyu Ri manages to catch the real killer, who is none other than a serial killer who has killed four women. For failing to divert the public's attention from Mr. Jones' corruption case, Il Hyun was severely reprimanded by Sok Hoon, especially after the mass media reported a press conference from Daehan party representatives who questioned the performance of the prosecutor's office, which was considered to be getting worse every day and also allegations of corruption involving prosecutors. After successfully uncovering the truth behind the murder case, Hee Woo is intent on destroying Il Hyun and his girlfriend, Jin Mi, for their corruption. With the help of So Q and Song Ho, He Wu manages to gather evidence about their corruption, so they immediately devise a plan to get rid of Il Hyun. On the other hand, So Kun secretly plots with Kong Jin to get rid of So Q by manipulating bribery practices on behalf of So Q. After successfully uncovering Il Hyun's corrupt practices, He Wu also intends to get rid of Kong Jin, who is also a corrupt prosecutor, by asking Gyu Ri for help to investigate Kong Jin's father's entertainment company, which is quite suspicious. At night, He Wu and Min Su accidentally cross paths with a woman named Hai Jin who is about to be killed by a man. They manage to save Hai Jin and arrest the man, and unexpectedly, Hai Jin turns out to be the daughter of Counselor Jin Yong of the Daehan party who is Tae Sob's rival. Coincidentally, Jin Yong and Hai Jin are acquaintances of Han Mi, so He Wu then asks Han Mi for help to bring him and Jin Yong together. Han Mi agrees to arrange a meeting between He Wu and Jin Yong, but Jin Yong turns out to dislike the prosecutors, especially after He Wu blatantly warns Jin Yong about a traitor in his circle. Upon hearing that, Jin Yong suddenly became shocked and thought that He Wu was trying to provoke him and intended to cause a rift within his team, so Jin Yong chose to leave He Wu instead of listening to his explanation. The following days, He Wu's words are finally proven when Jin Yong's chief of staff exposes himself for betraying Jin Yong and siding with Tae Sob. Shortly afterward, Tae Sob comes to Jin Yong to offer them an alliance, but Jin Yong firmly rejects the offer. Later that night, He Wu comes to Jin Yong who finally trusts He Wu and decides to work with He Wu to take down Tae Sob. With He Wu's help, Jin Yong manages to make the board members who are subordinates of Tae Sob panic and nervous as Jin Yong exposes their crimes in public. Meanwhile, Hia gets into a fight with her brothers because Gon Yong chose Hia as his heir to lead Chuna Group. Gon Yong chose his daughter because Hia not only thought about the company's progress, but also cared about the welfare of the employees, unlike her brothers who only prioritized profits. Hia, who realizes that the problems in her family are caused by Tae Sob's interference in controlling Chuna Group, tries to convince her older brother, Yong Jun, to work together to lead their family company. However, Yong Jun, who is jealous of Hia because his father prefers Hia instead of him, decides to go see Tae Sob and ask for his help. Unexpectedly, Tae Sob isn't satisfied with just controlling Yong Jun as he intends to get rid of Gon Yong and Hia, who are the obstacles to his whole plan. Tae Sob then orders Kong Jin to drag Gon Yong's second son, Son Jun, to the prosecutor's office for Son Jun's alleged embezzlement case. In addition, Tae Sob also ordered Sok Hoon to form a special team tasked with investigating a series of acts of corruption and tax evasion committed by the Chuna group. Upon knowing that, Gon Yong had no choice but to beg Tae Sob to release Son Jun and also keep his children out of politics. However, Tae Sob refuses to grant Gon Yong's request, so Gon Yong then shows a recording of Tae Sob's voice when he was still a corrupt prosecutor years ago trying to persuade Gon Yong to support him in the general election. Tae Sob, who doesn't want his crimes to be exposed, orders Jin Woo to get rid of Gon Yong by killing him. The next day, He Woo attends Gon Yong's funeral and tells Hia that he will help her handle all matters related to Chuna Group. Hia seems surprised to hear He Woo's words and asks about it. However, He Woo refuses to go into detail, so He assigns Jin Ho to investigate everything about He Woo. On the other hand, He Woo assumes that Tae Sob had a hand in Gon Yong's sudden death, because Tae Sob was ambitious to take over Chuna Group by ordering Dae Ho to buy more Chuna Group shares. While Hia is still mourning the death of her father, He Woo sees Gon Yong's death as an opportunity to destroy So Hoon, especially after So Hoon has become increasingly vulnerable since Il Hyun's arrest. Firstly, He Woo asks So Q for help to secretly investigate a corruption case involving JQ Construction, a construction company owned by So Hoon's wife and So Hoon's son, Yong Il, a junior director at the company. He Woo also asks Min Gok for help in investigating Bondo Bank as the bank is known to have given JQ Construction a large loan illegally. 
In addition, he Wu told Song Man to sell all the assets he owned, then set up an investment company by appointing Song Man as the CEO. The following days, He Wu met Hia and revealed his plan to arrest Tae Sob while explaining about the steps Tae Sob might take to destroy Hia's family and take over Chunha Group completely. Hia, who seems hesitant, then asks He Wu about his plan to protect Chunha Group from Tae Sob, and He Wu replies that he will arrest Tae Ho, CEO of Bondo Bank and Tae Sob's financial manager who has 15% of Chunha Group's shares. Meanwhile, Sok Hoon meets Tae Sob and begs Tae Sob to let him continue the investigation into Chuna Group because the prosecution has already revealed about the investigation to the public. So the public then questions the credibility of the judiciary to stop the investigation after Gon Yong died, which implies that the judiciary only favors conglomerates who have a lot of money and also government officials who have power. Sok Hoon intends to improve the prosecutor's office's tarnished image due to the Il Hyun case so that he can win the position of general attorney. But Tae Sob insists that Sok Hoon must stop the investigation into the Chunha group because it could become a problem for them in the future. Sok Hoon becomes even more upset that Tae Sob is apparently still considering his choice between Sok Hoon and the chief prosecutor of the Eastern Regional Prosecutor's Office, Jong Gi, to be the next general attorney. The next day, Sok Hoon decides to take the fight to Tae Sob by ordering Hee Woo to investigate Bondo Bank in secret which turns out to be part of Hee Woo and his comrade's plan. After Sok Hoon orders an investigation into Bondo Bank, Hee Woo meets Tae Sob at his residence to inform Tae Sob that Sok Hoon is trying to control Tae Sob by ordering him to investigate Bondo Bank, which is Tae Sob's company. Upon learning that, Tae Sob intends to give a gift to Hee Woo because he prefers to side with him over Sok Hoon, but Hee Woo tells Tae Sob that he doesn't want any gifts. As he's about to leave Tae Sob's residence, Hee Woo tells Ji Yoon that he's been investigating Ji Yoon's background as part of the investigation into Bondo Bank and Tae Sob, but he can't find anything about Ji Yoon's background. Upon hearing that, Ji Yoon tells Hee Woo that no matter how long it takes, Hee Woo will never know about her background and asks him to explain what he said a while ago. However, Hee Woo refuses to explain anything to Ji Yoon and asks her to wait because soon he will fulfill his promise to Ji Yoon. Shortly afterward, Tae Sob orders Jin Woo to keep an eye on Sok Hoon and Jong Gi, while Ji Yoon is assigned to investigate everything about Hee Woo. Upon knowing that Tae Sob has enough power and resources to divert the public's attention easily, no matter what, Hee Woo decides to ask for help from Jin Yoon, who is a politician, and Han Mi, who is none other than Sok Hoon's illegitimate daughter. Hee Woo apologizes to Han Mi because he intends to bring down her father, but Han Mi firmly says that she will help Hee Woo bring down her father because Sok Hoon is a bad person. On the other hand, Sok Hoon apparently doesn't really trust Hee Woo because he then orders Kong Jin to tail Hee Woo. Later that night, Hee Woo holds a secret meeting with Gyu Ri and her junior, Sung Hyog, and hands over the results of Sok Kyu's investigation into JQ construction to them. Hee Woo told them about his plan to bring down Sok Hoon using the investigation and asked them to investigate further. The next day, Hee Woo, who had received Tae Sob's permission to take down Sok Hoon, begged Tae Sob to let him take Ji Yoon to prison to meet Il Hyun so that Il Hyun would believe that Hee Woo was working for Tae Sob and agree to expose JQ Construction's corruption. A few days later, surprisingly, Tae Sob deliberately invited Hee Woo and Sok Hoon to dinner together, where he intended to test Hee Woo. However, Hee Woo had anticipated it so he passed the test with ease, and he also managed to keep Sok Hoon's trust in him by not revealing the Bondo Bank investigation to Tae Sob. In the meantime, Hia gets information about JQ Construction having bought 5% of Chuna Group's shares through a loan from Bondo Bank. Hia, who knows that JQ Construction is short of funds, then orders Jin Hyog to collect all the information about the company, then gives the information to Hee Woo for further investigation by the prosecutor's office. On the other hand, Tae Sob is furious when he learns that Dae Ho has given an illegal loan to Yong Il without his knowledge, even though Tae Sob intends to get rid of So Koon. Therefore, Tae Sob orders Hee Woo to stop the investigation into JQ Constructions. However, Hee Woo had anticipated that Tae Sob would do just that, so he asked Min Soo to secretly investigate the corruption committed by JQ Constructions. Based on the information he obtained from El Hon and managed to obtain evidence to bring the case to court. With the evidence, Gyu Ri manages to get a warrant to investigate Yong Il and JQ Construction, as her superior, Jong Gi, plans to get rid of So Koon so that he becomes the only candidate for the next general attorney. However, Tae Sob, who did not want his crime to be exposed, ordered Jong Gi to stop the investigation regarding JQ Constructions. Jong Gi agreed to obey Tae Sob's order, but Gyu Ri and Soon Hyog insisted on continuing the investigation, so Tae Sob ordered Jin Woo to get rid of them. But unexpectedly, He Woo had anticipated this, so he had asked Yoon Sok and Song Man to protect Gyu Ri and Soong Hyog. Later that night, Soong Hyog, who has walked into a trap, is confronted by Dr. K who threatens to kill him if Soong Hyog insists on continuing the investigation into JQ Constructions. Surprisingly, Soong Hyog is undaunted by the threat and tells Dr. K that he's not stopping the investigation, so Dr. K beats the crap out of Soong Hyog. 
Dr. K still gave one chance if Soong Hyuk begged him to spare his life, but Soong Hyuk still refused to give up, so Dr. K had no choice but to kill him. Just as Dr. K was about to kill Soong Hyuk the same way he killed Hee Woo earlier, Hee Woo suddenly appeared and stopped him. They then engaged in a fierce fight, where this time Hee Woo was able to match Dr. K, although Hee Woo had not managed to defeat him, because suddenly the sound of police car sirens made Dr. K choose to flee. Soon after that, Hee Woo met Tae Sob at his residence and revealed to Tae Sob that he met a mysterious man who attacked his colleague when he was about to meet his colleague to persuade him to stop the investigation regarding JQ Constructions. Hee Woo blatantly says that the man might be working for Tae Sob to silence the prosecutors who insist on continuing the investigation related to JQ Construction. But Tae Sob denies it while telling Hee Woo not to think about the man because he will track him down. Before Hee Woo leaves his residence, Tae Sob tells him that So Hoon will be the next general attorney, and So Hoon will tell Hee Woo to stop the investigation regarding Bondo Bank. Upon hearing that, Hee Woo seems to have guessed it and intends to execute his next plan. The following day, Hee Woo meets Jin Yong and asks him to incite the Daehan party chairman, Jong Taeg, against Tae Sob by handing over information about JQ construction to Jong Taeg. Jong Taeg initially refuses to expose the information because he is still loyal to Tae Sob. However, when Tae Sob starts interfering with the Daehan party's candidates for the next election and threatens to expose Jong Taeg's corruption, Jong Taeg becomes angry and intends to expose the information to the public to corner Tae Sob and the Mingguk party. Jong Taeg then meets Jong Gi who is willing to help him, because Jong Gi has a grudge against So Hoon who has been appointed as the next general attorney. On the other hand, Song Mon who was assigned to buy as many shares of JQ Constructions as possible, informs Hee Woo that a mysterious investor named Jong Hyuk bought more than 2% of the company. Upon learning that, Hee Woo tells Song Mon to find out about Jong Hyuk and approach Yong Il who is in need of money so that they can get Yong Il's shares. Surprisingly, Jong Hyuk is none other than Hee Ah's bodyguard, Jin Hyuk, who used his real name to buy JQ Construction shares on Hee Ah's orders. Hee Woo who found out about it then warned Hee Ah to be more careful because if Song Mon managed to get information about Jong Hyuk, then Tae Sob would also find out about it sooner or later. Therefore, Hee Woo suggests that Hee Ah work with Song Mon to take over JQ Constructions. The next day, Jong Taeg asks Jin Yong to expose the illegal loan given by Bondo Bank to JQ Constructions because Jong Taeg intends to bring Tae Sob down. But unexpectedly, Jin Yong refuses to do so because Jong Taeg will definitely make him a scapegoat. So he openly tells Jong Taeg that he will overthrow Jong Taeg's power in Daehan Party and become the chairman of Daehan Party to replace the corrupt Jong Taeg. Sometime later, while Sook Hoon is undergoing a hearing to determine whether Sook Hoon is fit to be the general attorney, Sook Q deliberately holds a press conference to reveal to the public the series of corrupt acts committed by JQ Construction, and issues a warrant to arrest Yong Il while ensuring that this time Yong Il will actually be imprisoned. Because of the case involving Sook Hoon's son, Jin Yong manages to corner Sook Hoon and Tae So, so the council members decide to postpone the election hearing to determine the new general attorney. On the other hand, Hee Woo didn't expect that Sook Kyu would hold the press conference since it wasn't part of their plan. However, Sook Kyu explains to them that he intends to end his career as a prosecutor after he brings down Sook Hoon. Shortly afterward, Tae Sob orders Sook Hoon to imprison his son if he wants to improve his reputation, while he will expose the corruption committed by Jong Taeg to divert public attention from Sook Hoon and the JQ Constructions case. Not only Yong Il was rearrested after being released by the Eastern District Prosecutor's Office, Mr. Jong who was involved in a corruption case was also rearrested by Min Su who managed to uncover another crime committed by Mr. Jong. After successfully arresting Mr. Jong, Min Su then reveals to Hee Woo that he has been working for Tae Sob and blatantly says that he will face Hee Woo. Even so, Min Su tells Hee Woo that he will still fulfill his promise to Hee Woo to take down So Hoon, which will be their last case as partners. Min Su then tells Hee Woo that a few days ago, Tae Sob offered to work with him to spy on Hee Woo because Min Su is Hee Woo's close friend. Min Su took a few days to consider the offer, but he finally decided to accept the offer because Tae Sob was willing to help him get revenge on Mr. Joan, who had slandered his father and caused his father to die in a mental hospital. Upon learning that, Hee Woo seemed surprised because he didn't expect that Min Su would side with his enemy, but Hee Woo chose not to take it further, especially after Min Su gave information about the corruption committed by So Hoon's wife. Soon after that, one by one, So Hoon and his family's crimes were finally exposed and lastly, Han Mi held a press conference to reveal her identity as So Hoon's illegitimate daughter who had been abandoned by So Hoon. With a series of crimes committed by So Hoon, Tae Sob finally orders Hee Woo to arrest So Hoon and try So Hoon according to the law, because he can't fix So Hoon's mistakes this time, especially after Han Mi revealed about her identity as So Hoon's illegitimate daughter, which is considered unethical by society, so So Hoon's career has been completely destroyed. 
On the other hand, Tae Sob appointed Jong Gi as the next general attorney and intended to make So Kyu the chief prosecutor at the central prosecutor's office replacing So Kun, because So Kyu was a fair prosecutor and had never been involved in any criminal cases. So Kyu initially rejects Tae Sob's offer to give So Kun's position to him, because So Kyu doesn't want to be controlled by anyone, including politicians like Tae Sob who ordered him to arrest his rival, Jin Young, even though Jin Young never committed any crimes. However, since Tae Sob threatens his family, So Kyu has no choice but to obey Tae Sob's orders, even though he secretly helps He Woo bring Tae Sob down. The scene then switches to the past and shows a young Ji Yoon living in an orphanage with her older brother. One day, the orphanage caught fire, just as Tae Sob made a visit to improve his electability. Tae Sob manages to save Ji Yoon and her brother who are trapped in the fire, but surprisingly, Jin Woo turns out to have deliberately caused the fire so that Tae Sob gets praise from the public. Ji Yoon accidentally overhears Tae Sob and Jin Woo's conversation about the matter and she looks so shocked because she didn't expect that the fire that had claimed the lives of her friends was caused by Jin Woo. After the fire incident, Tae Sob decided to take care of Ji Yoon until she grew up and made her his trusted secretary. While Ji Yoon's brother who lost his memory was trained by Jin Woo to become a fighter and assassin known as Dr. K in the present. He Wu managed to make it difficult for Bondo Bank to take over JQ Constructions after Song Mon bought the majority of JQ Construction shares, which infuriated Tae Sob. Tae Sob then tells Ji Yoon to call Song Mon and ask him to come to his house, but He Wu warns Song Mon to avoid contact with Tae Sob and his henchmen as much as possible. Unexpectedly, Song Mon goes to see Tae Sob without telling He Wu, so He Wu rushes to catch up with Song Mon and finally reveals his real intentions to Tae Sob. After confronting Tae Sob, He Wu begins to execute his plan to bring Tae Sob down by threatening Tae Sob's right hand man, Jin Wu, while showing evidence of the crimes committed by Jin Wu. However, Jin Wu chose to end his life to protect Tae Sob instead of letting He Wu put him on trial. Tae Sob, who was devastated by Jin Wu's death, retaliated against He Wu by ordering Dr. K to throw Song Mon off the roof of the building, but luckily Song Mon survived even though he had to lie comatose in the hospital. Not only did he harm Song Mon, Tae Sob also got He Wu's colleagues at the prosecutor's office transferred to branch offices in remote areas. Tae Sob did not even hesitate to threaten Hia who had become the head of Chuna Group, but Hia was not at all afraid of the threat, especially since she had the full support of her brothers and company executives. As part of He Wu's plan, Hia even agreed to pretend to be engaged to He Wu and announce their wedding plans to the public. Meanwhile, realizing that he won't be able to beat Tae Sob as a prosecutor, He Wu decides to resign from the prosecutor's office and asks Jin Yong for help in making him a candidate in the upcoming election. With the power he has as the leader of the Daehan party, Jin Yong manages to make He Wu a candidate who will compete against Tae Sob. On the other hand, Tae Sob was confident that He Wu wouldn't be able to beat him, but He Wu was undaunted because his goal wasn't to defeat Tae Sob in the election, but to bring Tae Sob down for good, even if it meant that He Wu would also go down with Tae Sob. Having devised such an elaborate trap scheme, He Wu then executes his grand plan by revealing Tae Sob's crimes in a debate broadcast across the country. The public was shocked to learn about the truth, but Tae Sob tried to evade it by giving a series of rebuttals and cornering He Wu. Surprisingly, Ji Yoon suddenly did a live broadcast hosted by Han Mi, where she then confirmed about the truth revealed by He Wu about Tae Sob. Ji Yoon doesn't deny that Tae Sob does intend to advance his country, but Tae Sob and his henchmen don't hesitate to do cruel things and eliminate the lives of many people just to achieve his goals. Ji Yoon secretly recorded Tae Sob's conversation when he ordered his henchmen, including her, to commit these crimes, as well as other important evidence so that Tae Sob could be brought to justice. Upon knowing that Ji Yoon has been betraying him, Tae Sob orders Dr. K to kill Ji Yoon. However, He Wu anticipates this by ordering Yoon Sok and Song Jae to protect Ji Yoon. Unexpectedly, Dr. K manages to find Ji Yoon's whereabouts, so they engage in a fierce battle against Dr. K to protect Ji Yoon. Dr. K turns out to be able to outsmart Yoon Sok and Son Jae who are so overwhelmed with him, but luckily, He Woo arrives in time to save them. He Woo and Dr. K then engage in a fierce fight, until He Woo is finally able to corner Dr. K when He Woo intends to kill Dr. K. Ji Yoon appears to stop him, and reveals to He Woo that Dr. K is her older brother who lost his memory and was used by Tae Sob to become an assassin. Shortly afterward, the police arrive at the place and immediately arrest Dr. K, while Ji Yoon decides to turn herself into the police because she also helped Tae Sob to commit some of his crimes. After the arrest of Dr. K and Ji Yoon, Tae Sob now has no one by his side, and is helpless as his glory has crumbled. Even so, Tae Sob refused to admit defeat to Hee Woo, even confidently saying that Hee Woo would not be able to catch him at any time. The following days, with Ji Yoon's testimony and the evidence of Tae Sob's crimes that she had collected, Tae Sob's henchmen were arrested and tried according to the law, as no one else could help them evade the law, while Tae Sob was rumored to have disappeared. He Woo, who has kept his promise to Ji Yoon, then visits Ji Yoon in prison where He Woo tells Ji Yoon to start a new and better life after serving her sentence in prison. 
While having lunch together, Min Su, who has never really betrayed Hee Woo, informs Hee Woo about Tae Sob's henchmen getting their sentences reduced, which indicates that there is a greater power behind Tae Sob and controlling them all. Min Su then asks Hee Woo to focus on making a world that people want to live in, while he will do his duty as a prosecutor to catch the criminals who intend to rule the world for their own benefit. Soon after that, after Song Mon woke up from his coma and had fully recovered, Hee Woo gathered the people who had been helping him in his plan to take down Tae Sob and his henchmen. Hee Woo thanks them for helping him all these years, and presents each of them with a holiday ticket to Bali as a token of gratitude. Hee then reveals to them that she and Hee Woo aren't really engaged, although they confirm that they are in a romantic relationship and intend to get married. Hee Woo's years of struggle to bring Tae Sob down finally paid off, and he not only defeated Tae Sob and his henchmen, but also managed to create a strong bond and gain the full trust of his friends. But the fight against corruption and crime will never go away, as long as greedy humans continue to emerge. Even so, Hee Woo is determined to always fight to eliminate injustice and eradicate corruption in his country. The moral of the series is that opportunity is the most precious gift, and a gift from God. But know that a second chance means nothing if you don't learn from your first mistake. Greedy humans will never have enough and never taste the sweetness of pleasure. In the end they will only lose themselves, all good deeds will not cover the bad, and vice versa. No matter how good a person's goal is if it has traveled the wrong way, it will never be good.